All right. Meanwhile, before the shirt talk, uh, you heard Lawrence talking about it. The White House now in damage control mode after President Biden inexplicably went on TV and called Trump supporters. It sure sounds like garbage during a campaign call last night. Lucas Tomlinson joins us live from the White House. Hey, Lucas. Well, good morning, Ainsley. It was just last week that President Biden said he wanted to lock Donald Trump up. Now he said the following last night. I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization is seen as unconscionable. A White House spokesman attempted to clarify Biden's remarks, saying, quote, the president referred to the hateful rhetoric at the Madison Square Garden rally as, quote, garbage. Until Biden's comments, which critics say harkens back to Hillary Clinton's deplorables comment, the night was supposed to belong to his vice president, Kamala Harris. Her campaign says 75,000 people packed the ellipse here in the nation's capital to listen to Harris's closing argument. Now, before Biden's remarks, there was a lot of focus on that comedian who spoke at the Garden at Trump's rally, who made what some considered a crude remark about Puerto Rico. Now it's Biden's comments that last night that many Trump supporters are finding offensive. Of course, President Biden has not campaigned with his vice president at a rally since Labor Day, and there's no plans for him to do so. Now, Senator Tom Cotton says he wants Biden to apologize to Harris. He wants Harris to condemn those comments, guys. Lucas, I've got a question for you. So last night, uh, Kamala Harris was on the ellipse, which is the park uh, to the side of the White House. Yep. You could right see the there. White House in the background. If Joe Biden looked out his window, he would see that party with tens of thousands of people that he was not invited to. Do you do people think that that's why he got on the horn and started talking to CNN and then made this gigantic mess less than a week before the election? What appears that this event was already planned, Steve, but you're right to point out the numbers of people who came here to the Ellipse, which is just a few hundred yards away. There's 75,000 people. And remember, in Houston over the weekend, 30,000 packed that arena to hear Beyonce and the vice president speak. Meanwhile, President Biden spoke at a rally in uh, Pittsburgh. It was just union members. It was only about 100 people that attended that one, Steve. Right. Uh, you just wonder why he was doing anything to take any spotlight away from the vice president when she needed the spotlight. Uh, and now, you, you know, he really messed up. Uh, Lucas, thanks so much. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah. So, uh, President Trump was on stage with Marco Rubio. They were at an event in Allentown, Pennsylvania at a rally. And Marco Rubio informed him. Breaking news. This is what Joe Biden just said about your supporters. Listen to this. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I have breaking news for you, Mr. President. You may not have heard this. Just moments ago, Joe Biden stated that our supporters are garbage. He's talking about the Border Patrol. He's talking about nurses. He's talking about teachers. He's talking about everyday Americans who love their country and want to dream big again and support you, Mr. President. And I hope their campaign is about to apologize for what Joe Biden just said. We are not garbage. We are patriots who love America. And thank you for running, Mr. President. That's terrible. Remember, Hillary, she said deplorable. And then she said irredeemable, right? But she said deplorable. That didn't work out. Garbage, I think, is worse, right? Right. It's, it's not helpful to the Harris campaign. One of the spins is they, want to, they said, we just want to put an apostrophe. We want to fix it by putting an apostrophe after uh, the S in the sentence to make it make sense. I don't know how that makes sense. I don't after think you can. S? Uh, after what S? It was because he said the only garbage I see floating out there are his supporters. Supporters. Oh, supporters. After yeah. Supporters. Right. So, yep. yeah, so they put out an official put statement on right the after. Supporters. Right. So, yeah, the, this, is, uh, this is their spin. Um, they said we uh, the the damage control statement then added added an apostrophe to the word supporters to imply that Biden was only referring to one person, oh, right. and the, that's the, the comedian, comedian Tony okay. Hinchcliffe who made it who made the joke about Puerto Rico. Well, this is what Joe Biden. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great spin. Right. What what Joe course, Biden did last night is well, exactly team left. What Joe Biden did last night is exactly why the campaign of Kamala Harris does not want to campaign with him because I think she gave him another yeah. chance. He is unpopular and he is. Undisciplined, and he has made a gigantic mess did they even, for did her. Did they even talk, though? Isn't this the second time we've talked about how he's doing an interview while she has a big yes. event? 
Remember, he went and took over the press conference <laughs> right, right. in the press room while she's having but an event, and everyone had to switch away to the president. But y'all, this is what they think of middle America. This is what they think of the South. Deplorable, smelly Walmart shoppers. Remember when Barack Obama was in office or running, and he said um, he was caught on a hot mic talking about Bibles and guns. That's what the God middle America, God and guns, mm -hmm. exactly. That's what they think of all of us. These are these coastal elites that you know, live in their ivory towers. They're all politicians. They make millions of dollars. They call in the Hollywood A-listers, and that's what they think of middle America. You, know, you might be able to get, get away with that by criticizing Jill Stein supporters, both of them. But you can't do that to 74 million people no. minimum. So that's why I, I'm sure when those doors close, they cannot figure how Joe, not only that, Joe, that uh, Donald Trump uh, may win, but that he even got the nomination. They must sit there and go, what, what are they not seeing about what we're seeing? They're flabbergasted. Speaking of Jill Stein, it turns out yesterday the U.S. Supreme Court refused to take RFK Jr. off the ballots in Wisconsin and Michigan, which is not helpful for Donald Trump uh, because he would want his name off. Uh, RFK, very disappointed, but the Supreme Court not going to budge. Meanwhile, President Biden stole the spotlight last night. In the race, he dropped out over this comment about Trump supporters, it sounds like. I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization is seen as unconscionable. Kind of a mess. Fox and Friends co-host Lawrence Jones is joined by U.S. Senate candidate Dave McCormick, the Republican, in the battleground of Pennsylvania, right there at that diner in Gap, PA. Guys, good morning. Hey, good morning, Steve. We got Dave in here. Uh, we just got to get your reaction to the latest comments. The, the president was supposed to be watching Kamala Harris's speech yesterday. That's what he told us. Unfortunately, we learned that he was on a live stream in front of a laptop and he called Trump supporters garbage. What's your response? Yeah, listen, anytime you call half of Americans garbage because half the population is supporting President Trump, I think this is the kind of divisive rhetoric that we need to get out of politics. I think it's terribly polarizing. And so not only has President Biden, Kamala Harris, and Bob Casey had policies that have hurt more than half of Americans with skyrocketing prices, the fentanyl crisis, now they're actually showing disrespect for him. So I, I hope the president will apologize for that, and, uh, and, uh, and we need to get that kind of horrible rhetoric. I think it shows how they really feel about people that support President Trump. You got a broad coalition of support. You got some independent voters. You got the former president, Donald Trump, supporting you. Nikki Haley, who challenged the former president, is going to be on the ground campaigning with you. Why does that matter, bringing everyone uh, for this race? Well, listen, I'm trying to build a coalition. President Trump's been here many times, and he's been an, a, a very big supporter. But I've got to build a coalition that is 50 percent plus one. And that includes Republicans that are on the fence, independents, conservative Democrats. And these problems are not Republican problems. <laughs> the, the wide open border, skyrocketing prices, the war on fossil fuels, these affect all Pennsylvanians. And we need to have a senator that's going to fight for that. Senator Casey's been a career politician. He's been weak. He's voted for all these liberal policies that are really taking our country in the wrong direction. And I'm, I'm someone who's an outsider, and I got to build a coalition that supports Your race me. is now a toss-up, but your opponent is trying to find some way to link himself to Donald Trump. To President Trump. I mean, this is the, this is, you, you know, panic is, is setting in at Casey headquarters because he's not only saying these outrageous lies and his attack ads, he's now running commercials with him lining up to President Trump, who says he, he can't remember what Bob Casey looks like. So, listen, we're going to win this election. Um, it's critical that we get every single vote out there. Uh, we, the mail -in, the request for mail-in ballots is gone. we got to get people out to the polls, and we're going to make a difference and win this election because people are rising up and they want to get their country moving in the right direction again. There's, there's a lot of people that are excited about sending another door kicker to kick down the walls of Washington as well. Let's talk with some of the folks here because I think that's important as well. I think we got Tyler right here. So Tyler, what is your question for Dave? Well, sir, thank you so much for coming to speak to voters today. We certainly appreciate it. I'd like to hear a little bit more about your solutions for the fentanyl crisis coming across our southern border and uh, how we can start helping millions of Americans. Yeah, this is a tragedy. We lost 4,000 Pennsylvanians last year from fentanyl. I've sat down with fentanyl families. It's the most heartbreaking thing They've lost their children, and most of them didn't even know they were taking fentanyl. And it comes across the wide open borders 
that President Biden, Kamala Harris, and Bob Casey have allowed. They've supported sanctuary cities. Day one in the Senate, we need to finish the wall. We need to fund the Border Patrol. And I think we need to designate these cartels as terrorist uh, organizations and go across the border with our drones, with our special operations, and destroy the manufacturing, destroy the distribution. This is a war on our communities. We have to treat it seriously. We've got to reduce demand and other things, but we've got to reduce the supply. And, uh, and that's, honestly, uh, our leadership has failed us on this. We need to take it more seriously and fix it. Sir, that's important for a lot of Americans. Let's go to my friend right here. What's your name again? Angie. And we got Angie. What's your question for Dave? Hey, Dave. I just want to know what your take is on all this rhetoric. You know, we were called deplorables in the past. Last night, the president referred to us as garbage. Yeah. I mean, I'm a middle class American. I don't get fancy nails. I clean houses. What, you know, what do you make of it? I, I just I, said the same thing. It's, the, it's, it's beneath uh, the president of the United States, our commander in chief, Bob Casey's best friend to refer to half of Americans as garbage. You know, listen, we need to be above it. We need to recognize that we need leadership. We need common sense policies. That's what, uh, that's what I'm running on. And I recognize that on day one as in the Senate, I'm gonna have to represent every single Pennsylvanian. I want to. Democrats, Republicans, independents. This is about leadership. That was uh, a terrible comment, a disgraceful comment. And uh, it reminds me of Hillary Clinton talking about the deplorables. That can't be what they think of half of America. Uh, it's it's an awful thing, and I, I hope the president apologizes and takes it back. Words. Thank you so much. We've got one more quick question. All right, ma'am, what's your name? Jenna. What's your question for Dave? So it's increasingly harder for young people of my generation uh, to be able to raise families. So what can you do to make home ownership and child care more affordable? Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, excuse me, um, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's a, a direct result of the price inflation the skyrocketing prices we have under Biden, Harris, and Bob Casey. Bob Casey voted 98% of the time for all these spending bills. We've got to make it easier to have children. So President Trump, in his 2017 tax plan, had a, a tax a child tax credit. I would triple the size of that. Um, so that needs to be much more significant. We need to have child care, care tax credit. And one of the things I proposed is a fertility treatment, IVF tax credit, because fertility treatment is so expensive most Americans can't afford it, and yet, and if they can't afford it, they can't experience the joy of, uh, of children. When I was a CEO, I made sure every single employee had access to IVF. We need to do that for all Americans. Having the joy, of, listen, I have six daughters. So the joy of parenting, I want to make sure every, uh, every single Pennsylvanian can have that who wants it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Lauren. And guys, this, he's doing the work. He's talking with the folks here, a lot of photos, but answering the tough questions from the voters. I'll send it back to you, Steve. All right, great discussion, Lawrence. And Dave, thank you very much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.